The wonderful world of Nick. Buy just a video game from Atari or in television. Invest in the wonder computer of the 1980s for under $300. The Commodore VIC-20. Unlike games, it has a real computer keyboard. With the Commodore VIC-20, the whole family can learn computing at home. Plays great games, too. Under $300, the wonder computer of the 1980s. The Commodore VIC-20. Hi, it's Nate. And guess what? I don't know what I'm doing. Once again. Well... This is the first video, so I guess I don't even know that either. Um, but uh, anyway, I wanted to take a look at something that I definitely don't know what I'm doing with, and that was Commodore's 8-bit machines. Uh, and I kind of want to start with the VIC-20 because that's got some interesting things from my standpoint doing application design and web development and all this stuff. It's got a super constrained memory footprint which basically means nothing that I would actually do in these days would work on it, but I'd like to try some stuff out uh, and then give myself some escape hatches there too. So I did make a shopping list and since I don't have a VIC-20, I'm gonna go have to go out and uh, do some shopping to get it, but let's make sure I have everything on that shopping list. Alexa, what's on my shopping list? You have three items on your shopping list. Commodore VIC-20, VIC-20 memory modules, Commodore data set. Perfect. Thank you, Alexa. So I found a location to buy all this stuff way out in Lancaster. Not a terrible drive, but about an hour away. Hopped in the car and took advantage of the trip to stop off at the Vasquez Rocks, which you probably recognize from a bunch of Star Trek episodes, including Arena, which a connection with the Vic starred William Shatner fighting against a lizard guy in probably one of the worst fight scenes ever put on film. So after that, we hopped back in the car and headed the rest of the way to Lancaster to pick up the haul. Pretty decent stuff, including a couple extra items, and let's take a look at what we got. Okay, wow. That was, uh, you know, quite a lot of work that I just did there. Um, I drove all over the place, drove about an hour and a half north, hour and a half back, uh, picked up a couple other things along the way. I mean, it may not look like it since it's pretty much exactly the same time of day right now, and I'm wearing the exact same thing, but guarantee I went all over the place just now. Um, so let's see what I got. So the main thing um, that I needed to pick up was this, uh, the VIC-20. A um, couple interesting things to note here. First of all, it's not in too bad shape. Um, there is what looks like probably a cigarette burn right there, which, you know, I could probably do something about, but I kind of like it. Um, I'm going to have to, you know, clean this up a little bit. Um, but not too bad actually. But one thing I thought was interesting and I did a little research on this was this little uh, insert here. I actually picked up a Commodore 64 from the same person that had something similar. Now this is uh, uh, something called NBA Tour, which I had no idea what it was when I picked it up, but uh, uh, I did a little research and this is what I found out. These computers were hobbyist computers overall, and that means not only computer hobbyists, but also other hobbyists too, such as ham radio enthusiasts, uh, which probably also means that that cigarette burn I thought is actually probably a soldering iron burn. There was all sorts of other equipment you could buy uh, to use with these things beyond computer-based stuff. For instance, uh, these uh, symbols here actually were part of a package, a communication package uh, that AEA software made uh, that involved a piece of hardware called the PackRat and a bunch of different software suites that you could use with it too that allowed you to use packet radio on your VIC-20 or your Commodore 64. So that's pretty interesting. Um, interesting stuff there, other me who was just talking. Um, yeah, let's, uh, let's take a look at this and see what we can get working. We will, and it's other me again putting this stuff down onto my desk and we'll plug this into the old NEC green screen we have over here. 
I do have an old power supply from a Commodore 64. You have to be careful with these because they can give too much voltage, but this one's been tested. I know it works, so let's see what happens. And it works, yay. So let's try the keyboard, see how that's functioning. Sticky keys here and stuff that's not registering, so we'll have to clean that up a bit. Other issue is the power switch doesn't really like to stay on, so we'll have to take a look at that as well. All right, so what came with it was this blank no-name cartridge. We'll have to figure out what that is. Like I said, I don't know what I'm doing with the VIC-20, so for all I know, there could be millions of these, which there probably is, so let me know in the comments. So this is the Super Expander uh, with 3K RAM cartridge. Now this, I think, has some extra graphics routines, maybe, I don't know. The Programmer's Aid cartridge, uh, which I think extended basic a little bit. Um, um, I got another whopping 8K RAM cartridge. And then if I really want to do something massive, I got a 16K cartridge too. So we'll have to figure out what this one is. We'll have to also see if any of these actually work because I have no clue. Um, and the person I bought it from uh, didn't have a clue either. So before we jump into the cleanup of this thing, I wanted to recommend a couple other YouTube videos which are pretty awesome about the history of the VIC-20. Uh, there's, of course, the 8-Bit Guys Part 2 of the Commodore history, which goes into a lot of detail about Commodore, and in particular Part 2 about the VIC-20. You have LGR's old-school review of the VIC-20, where he goes into a little bit of the background awesome video and then of course uh, you should also check out the nostalgia nerd one the vic 20 unboxing and perusing which goes into a lot of his perspective on the vic 20 and some of the games and features of the system so with that let's get started on cleaning this thing up actually this board is not in too bad of a shape it's dusty but not too bad. So let's start cleaning some of that dust up, get a little better look at the state of things in here. Take some alcohol and my favorite q-tips, we're gonna go through a lot of those and I'm also gonna try and salvage these feet on the bottom which aren't in too bad a shape. But take a look at this, uh, see how yellowed the case has actually gotten. Now it's time for a nice little wash. We're gonna put it in uh, some of the Salon Care 20 so we can put it outside and get a little retro bright action going on. Cleaned up pretty well, right? You can barely see the discoloration where that was anymore. And you know, my favorite way to clean the inside is to take a wire brush to it. Actually, just a light wipe with an alcohol cloth should do you, and then we can scrub down all the little bits and pieces of the plastic inside, as well as the keycaps and so on. Let them dry out. Kind of fun doing this. But I always like these things. They remind me of those pin things you can put your hand in. Now let's put on however many screws these are, 50. 20, I don't know. You lose track. Ah, oh, yes, more screwing screws and screw holes. Look at what all our hard work got us there. Perfectly clean motherboard. Beautiful. Lovely. Well, let's uh, plug that keyboard back in and connect it up to the old green screen and see what uh, we got. Uh, well, the switch seems to be working better. All the keys are functioning now, but getting a little unresponsive still. So I think I know what's going on, but we'll have to wait till next time for that. We should give this little poor Vic a rest. It's had quite a busy day. Lots of deep cleaning, cleaned out inside and out. De sun tanning, if you will came out really nicely. I'm actually really happy, even with some of the defects in the case that it already had. 
sparkling keys will be a joy to type on once we figure out what's going on with those sticky keys, but I am pretty sure I have a fix for that. So with that, we'll put the Vic-20 in its little blanket, dust cover actually, and put it away so that we can work on it again some other day, but for tonight, we'll let it have a little rest, we'll pick it up again in the future. Well, that was a whole lot of fun. I really enjoyed making this video and I really enjoyed taking apart the Vic and cleaning it out and getting it all ready for the next step of stuff we're gonna do. Now, if you liked the, either the Commodore poster or that uh, dust cover you saw, picked up both of those on eBay. I'll put links into the sellers of both of those items. The dust covers in particular um, are pretty awesome. I've actually bought a couple already and they make a ton. They're all perfectly made for the different devices. So they have ones for um, the Atari 800, they have ones for Jaguar, they have ones for SNES, they have a whole slew of them. Um, and if you don't see the one you want, uh, chances are they'll be posting it again soon. So I'll put links to them in there. Also put links into the YouTube videos that I mentioned in there just in case uh, you skipped them. I definitely recommend them. They're awesome. Um, one more thing to check out is uh, the Floppy Days podcast. There's an excellent series on there. It's four or five episodes all about the VIC-20. Um, just great interviews. There's also one that's like kind of a documentary style um, podcast episode, and it is fantastic. Can't can't recommend it enough. So I'll have a link into there in the in the description as well. Um, we already know we got a few things still left to do in the next part of this series. We got to take a look at that keyboard. We got to uh, take a look at uh, the power switch. It's mostly working, but it's not quite there yet. So that's something I definitely don't know anything about, so it'll be fun to kind of learn. Um, we're gonna take a look at the uh, memory cartridges. Uh, I actually acquired a piece of equipment that I think will be kind of fun to use with those, but I'm not gonna tell you what it is because I don't wanna ruin the surprise for the next episode. And then we'll also take a look at the cartridges and how you load and store and save stuff on there as well as trying to get them to work. Um, so I hope you liked this video. If you did, click like. And if you did as well, click subscribe. And we'll see you next time here on I Don't Know What I'm Doing, because I really don't know what I'm doing. <laughs>